They can become better. My perspective changes because of a God who has redeemed me and nothing is impossible with my redeeming God. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. at some scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 Comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any way in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. Back to verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. How many believe our God is a great father? Is he a great father to you? Amen. And on this Father's Day, why don't we serve our Father? Isn't he a good father? He's a great father. Let's give him honor and praise and worship right now, shall we? We honor you, Jesus, for being our great Father, the one true living God. We honor you. We honor you. Come on, church. Let's give him some praise right now. We honor you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we honor you, oh God. We honor you, oh God. Halomo, no boshan, no no baha, kadarian, no 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 We honor you. We honor you. or your sister by the hand. I want you to pray this prayer. Lord, if my brother or sister, go ahead and pray right now, my brother or sister, whatever it is, is hurting today or is oppressed today or is discouraged today, I pray you would turn that around and that you would give comfort. You're the Father of mercy. You're the God of all comfort. You comforteth us in all of our tribulation. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your strength. We take authority over the enemy. We break every chain. We break every bondage. We take authority over the prince and the power of the air. And we rebuke the prince in the name of Jesus. And we bind him and command him to loose every child of God, every guest, every visitor, every person in the house of God today. 
thank you for the flow of your spirit to my brother and my sister. Help them be open. Help them be receptive. Help them grow through their trial. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. In Jesus' name. Now lift their hand up and give God high praise. Keep holding their hand and just lift it up. Let's all pray in tongues for just a few moments. Oh, Welcome into this place. Welcome into this place. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we live. We welcome you here today. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this temple, God. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire. Up to him this morning and sing this to him. God, we welcome you here today. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands. We lift our hearts. We lift our oh hearts. Lord Jesus. As we offer up this praise unto you. We welcome you, God, in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you glad he's here this morning? Are you glad he's here this morning? Oh, we love you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord Jesus, to this place today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Find about five people. Greet them and welcome them here also with a smile on your face. Welcome them into the presence of the Lord as we begin to worship him together as the body of Christ.
And we thank you for it, Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Oh, yes. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say so. Oh. Are you redeemed today? impossible nothing at all is impossible with our God he's redeemed us he's pulled us out of this world he's brought us into his marvelous light and I'm so thankful that I serve a God that when I call upon him anything can happen any situation can change 
anything can become better. My perspective changes because of a God who has redeemed me and nothing is impossible with my redeeming God. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. today it's not impossible for God to come through and do a work in that situation 
whatever you came with on your shoulders this morning, you can leave with it lifted because nothing is impossible for God today. Absolutely nothing is impossible for God today. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Lord, we long to be in your presence, God. We long to be with you, Lord Jesus. We long to get deeper in you, Lord God. You're so wonderful. I wonder if you could just reach over and take the hand of the person next to you and just lift up your hands together as the body of Christ. Lord God, we love you so much and we want to be in your presence. We want to be in your presence, God. We want to be in your love. We want to be in your arms, Lord Jesus. That's where we long to be. That's where we desire to be, Lord Jesus. God, nothing's impossible with you and, and nothing else matters, Lord, but being in your presence. And I thank you today, Lord Jesus, that we can do this. We can worship you and you respond. And you allow us to sit in your presence. You allow us to worship in your presence. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.
maybe even physically just begin to bow down before the Lord this morning. Bow down and worship to him. Bow down and surrender to him. Bow down and say, God, it's not what I desire, but it's what you desire. God, I bow down and I worship you, God, because nothing else matters. Nothing else in my life right now matters, Lord God, but being here in your presence, Lord Jesus. I need you, God. I need you, God. You're so wonderful. You're so precious, Jesus. You're wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. You're wonderful, beautiful, and glorious, God. of the Lord here. All things are new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever's troubling you right now could bow. We'll bow in the presence of the Lord because we know that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. And at His right hand our pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is soothing somebody right now in His presence. He's our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And He's visiting His people today in a very wonderful way. Hallelujah. Just reach out and touch Him today. And that peace that you've been searching for will flow into your heart, your mind. Will ease your mind. Hallelujah. And ease those troubles that you're struggling with. Praise God. The Father's showing that He cares right now. And He loves us. And we thank Him right now and praise Him for His goodness, His mercy, His caring, His blessings in our lives. 
There's healing in his wings here today. Praise God. We're going to go to him in prayer. You may be seated. Heidi Wallace is thanking God that after being a donor of blood marrow transplant, the recipient is live and disease-free is doing well. We rejoice with our sister there. Praise God. Pauline Pinnock for Hector Cole. Uh, her brother Hector is in need of prayer. We will pray for Hector. Roman Wallace um, for Adriana Massera. Family to give God to give family strength to remove cancer. Jason Ref Snyder for Cliff McCreary needs a healing. Ingrid Spence for her brother Doug Corman as a special need. Ingrid Spence for Marette Sophia Spence. Uh, needs a healing from repeated fevers. And uh, Donette Shoup needs a healing. We pray God's healing upon her. Isaac Johnson for Gwendolyn Johnson, Sister Nita's mom, not feeling well. We lift up Sister Gwendolyn. Uh, Sister Kitty Edwards for Brother Maddox. He's still, he had surgery last week, and he's still recovering. We want God to do that speedily, help him with that. Uh, Karen Diaz for Westmoreland family. William Westmoreland passed away in need of God's comfort and love, and we certainly pray that. Praise God. So if you, if I called your prayer need out, I'd ask you to stand right now. Amen. We want to pray for Sister Denora Dominguez. She went to urgent care last Thursday. And uh, she's in need of prayer. We want God to heal her. In Jesus' name. Amen. We want to pray for Brother Tim Aarons. Keep him lifted up. His brother passed away. And we want God's comfort to surround that family. All right. If you have a prayer need and you would like prayer and you didn't put a prayer request in, or if you put a prayer request in I would, and you want someone to pray with you, I ask you to stand right now. Okay. We got several people standing. All right, there's some more. Don't be bashful. Amen. Okay, saints, you see these that are standing? Let's go to them. And let's lift her knee up to the Lord. And everybody find somebody to pray with. We're going to pray and lift one another and these needs to God right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your healing virtue that's flowing right now, Lord. We thank you for being our heavenly Father this day for your care, for your love, for your provision, for your comfort. Hallelujah. You are the best there is. We appreciate you, Father. We thank you for coming alongside Tim Aaron's God. Surround him with your presence right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Comfort him and hold him close in his family, God. In Jesus' name, and the Westmoreland family, God, comfort them, Lord. We thank you for healing Brother Maddox, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you for a speedy recovery, God, that he could be back in your house. Thank you for touching Gwendolyn Johnson, God, and healing her, and Donette Shoup, God, in Jesus' name. Heal Moret, God, from these fevers. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. And Doug Corman, God, thank you for your favor in his life. And he on Cliff McCreary, God. And Adriana Messeri, God. Thank you for healing Hector Cole, God. Thank you for all the marvelous, wonderful things that you're doing in our midst. Thank you for the miracles that are taking place right now. We bless you. We bless you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for flowing to these needs here today, God.
touching each and every heart here today. Thank you for your joy flowing in this place continuously, God. Thank you for relieving those that are under severe stress and pain, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we praise you, God. We give you the glory, God. We give you the glory, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's it. Let's clap our hands unto him in thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for touching all these needs here today. Thank you for touching every need. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, next week, next Saturday, our first event down here in Damascus Gardens is going to be taking place. It's called our uh, kickoff for the kids' zone down there. And, Brother Morado, I'm going to ask you to come over here and just pray for a second that this event is going to be uh, the inflatables and food and all kinds of things to connect with the community and to bless those children. The week after that, we'll be starting the Sunday school portion of it on Saturday mornings. So I'd like you to grab a microphone and just pray that God will bless that event next Saturday and we'll be able to affect people's lives for the kingdom of God. All right, let's pray together. Father... We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to witness to the Damascus Garden community, God. Lord, we ask your spirit to flow to these people even now, God, and draw them to this event, God, where we can lift you up and magnify you, God, and show them, God, the light that you shined into our lives, God. We want to share this great truth with them, Father. Draw them to your bosom, God. We want to draw them to the kingdom of God so that they could reap the benefits of being in your presence, Lord. We thank you for adding these souls to the church in the weeks to come, God. We thank you, Father, for the ability to help them grow in you, God, to receive from you all the benefits of our heavenly Father. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And we plead the blood over this community, over these people, over the lost, God. That you touch each and every one of them, God, in a miraculous way, God, in a loving way, Lord, where they could feel the presence, God, the need for their lives, for their families' lives, Mm -hmm. for their future. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for a great success this next week and the weeks to come. We thank you for adding them to the body of Christ. We we bless you and praise you for it. Give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We also have some new members to welcome here today. Uh, Arnetta uh, Bayard and Terrence Fletcher have become community members at Christian Life Center. Are you here? Okay. Terrence had to work, didn't he? Okay. There you are. Congratulations, and we're so glad you're a part of our family. Would you give that to them? And what is it? Next week, the 30th of June, they're flying to Jamaica and getting married. Amen. So we're happy about that. Also, another community member, or two other community members, as they're moving their way through the journey, is Christina Hernandez and Tony Clark Castillo. Amen. Christina, congratulations, and we're so glad you're becoming a part of our family. Amen. God bless you. And it's Tony here. Oh, there you are. Congratulations. Amen. We appreciate your effort and through the journey. And God bless you. Our journey class is our road to membership. And uh, 
and to being involved in ministry. And these folks have been working hard and doing reading and going to classes, and we appreciate that very much. We also have some covenant members today that have gone through the course and have met and have become covenant members, and we want to invite them to come down for a minute, Gordon and Donna Lynch. Would you come on down? Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're so excited to watch you grow and develop in the kingdom of God and become a part of our uh, family. And there is your certificate, and there is your certificate, and we want you to become leaders in our church. Amen. God bless you. We love you so very much. Amen. Got one more? Okay. All right. Go ahead, brother. Praise the Lord, everybody. We want to take this time, if you'd all stand together, and honor Pastor Libby on Father's Day. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. When I think about Pastor Libby, I think about David, King David, how the Lord sent him out into the field to take care of the sheep, to learn how to take care of the sheep before he gave him actual people. He learned how to do it. When he became a king, he was a wonderful, wonderful man, took care of his people. I think about Peter, what Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And Pastor Libby, ever since I've known him, I don't know how many years now, 40 years, seems like. Maybe it's not that long. Pretty close, 38 years. I've watched him take care of the people, take care of his sheep, feed the sheep, nurture them, uplift them. Amen. He's always looking out over his flock. You can see him up here. If you're not here, he's going to know. He's having a hard time getting used to this Newton seating arrangement, but he's figuring it out. And if you're not showing up for church, he's going to know you're not here now. Praise God. He's just a man that loves at all times. He's, and he told me a story one time. I don't know if he said it before the church, but he was at the airport, and he was going to meet his daughter there. And he hadn't seen her yet. And all of a sudden, he heard in the distance, Abba, Abba. And that was Joy, his daughter, telling her daddy how much she loved him. Praise God. And we love him too, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Jason would like to say a few words. I just want to thank Pastor for starting a church in Gaithersburg. Now, I wonder where would I be if, I, if he didn't start one. And I think that applies to all of us right now. Pastor Libby, um, we all know, is an amazing, amazing, amazing pastor. And um, he gives of himself endlessly. Like, he just, he just doesn't stop. And uh, it's, it's so commendable. And so it's, it's only right for us to honor him. Um, he's been a father to Pastor Sean and, and to Joy, but to us as well, you know, praying for us and 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 going before God for us and interceding on our, our behalf and spending time with us and, and encouraging us and, you know, night after night, day after day, every Sunday, preaching God's word and, 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 and doing what God has called him to do. There are many, many leaders out there who, who don't, like Pastor does. And I'm just so thankful for our pastor, um, Brother Dole, as the oldest father, I guess, in, in the room, almost. <laughs> um, and myself as the newest, the newest father. Um, but I've known Pastor Libby 30 years all my life. <laughs> I was actually born under the pew right over in, no. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Pastor Libby's watched me grow. I've grown under um, his leadership. And it, you can't help but his life impact, impact your, um, your life in a, in a major way. 
So, Pastor, we love you and thank you for all that you do, and happy Father's Day. Thank you. Yeah, and we also have something for Pastor Sean as well, um, who has just followed in his father's footsteps and, um, and gives of himself. It's like you see him, like just, he's just stepped right in, and, um, and he, just, he just doesn't stop also. He's just adopted that, and, um, and it's just awesome to have such, such amazing leadership. I know Pastor Sean has poured into us as young adults, poured into this congregation, and um, I'm thankful for our leadership. Amen. Right. Happy pa- Father's Day, Pastor Sean. Praise the Lord. Sure. Bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, thank you so very much. I appreciate the kind words. I don't feel like that I have done the job that. I wanted to do, but I think I always tried hard. And um, Pastor Sean is in Louisiana visiting with his family and Monique being with her father on Father's Day. That's why they're not here today. So thank you very much. I appreciate your thoughts, and God bless.
How many's glad the blood still works? Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Amen. Let's stand and get our Bibles. And let's turn to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. And then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 9. Very familiar scripture. While we're turning there, I want to remind you that we will be receiving signatures for this petition to get on the ballot in November a vote of the people on whether Maryland wants to pass a same-sex marriage act. The uh, legislature, under the direction of our governor, passed a law. We are the seventh state to pass a law legalizing same-sex marriage. And we believe that that's immoral and wrong. We do not hate homosexuals. But as Christians, we learn that we need to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And that is an aversion to God. We don't have time to go into a deep Bible study right this second. But some of you last week, and I believe, Kitty, if you're around, um, you are con trying to get people's attention here. Some of you, when you filled this in, you didn't, you signed in the wrong place and sort of didn't really pay attention. And what that does, if they find one name that's messed up like that, they throw away the whole page. So... Kitty is going around letting some people know you need to redo this. And you're doing that also with other people that were on the page that need to redo it, right? Okay, I, I hope you could hear her. I could not hear her. But you need to be sure your name counted. It's right. very important that you... Put your name where it says put your name and signature where it says put your signature. They're very, very picky on this. All right. I'm, I was just saying we did contact a few people, but we do have a list. So if you just come by the table as you go out, we'll just, if you have your name, we have you alphabetized and everything. We'll just have you change it. So it shouldn't take long if you just okay. come by the table. You want your name to count, and we've got to do it absolutely precisely. It's just the way it is. Government, you know. And so, also, we have to be in the right counties. Right, Kitty? So, be sure you sign a piece of paper that's from the county you live in. And everybody on that page has got to be in the same county. So, it's very, very particular. Thank you very much. And also, I hope that those of you who are fathers got one of these books today. And if you didn't, where are they? In guest reception? Okay. So if you did not get a booklet and you are a father or a grandfather, I'd like you to get one of these as long as they last. I don't know how many we have. The Lord is the strength of my life. There's 22 devotionals here, just very short. Excellent little tool to just sort of help you through the day. Today is Father's Day, obviously, and I'm going to be preaching in a few minutes from the Word of God about what kind of father we have. And I would like all of our fathers to think about the kind of father God is 
and how well you're doing to emulate his fatherhood. In other words, the same kind of father we have is the type of father we, you and I need to be. So I'm believing at the end of the service, which is not too far from now, that all of our fathers will come to the front and make a new dedication. Not coming to make, get a blessing, but get, make a change and a commitment, a deeper commitment to be the kind of father God wants you to be and you want to be. So I'm preparing you. I'm going to give an altar call to all the fathers. And I want you to line up here. I want to have special prayer with you because you hold such an important key to the welfare of your family. Chapter 9 of Isaiah, verse 6. You know the story. Let's read it out loud together. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That's our God. Isn't that great? Oh, I just love that scripture. In Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to read one more verse. Matthew chapter 6. I want you to go ahead and prepare right now, Sheila. All right, do what you have to do. We've got a little problem on our system here. So go ahead and do that drag or whatever it was you have to do. And let me know. Somebody yell at me when it's ready to go, okay? Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Let's look in your Bibles. Do not look at the screen. Just look in your Bible. Matthew chapter 6. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father. Everybody say, our Father. Everybody say, my Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In our world, in my opinion, fatherhood and the office of fatherhood has been very downplayed. And you listen and watch this video that you're going to see in just a moment. And tell me if that's true, that fatherhood is important to your children, to your family. Let's pray. Lord, bless our next few minutes here today. Help us to be the people that we need to be and particularly the fathers that we need to be. Thank you for the example of fatherhood. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Watch very closely and listen. If we can get the front lights Lucky out, that'd be great. percent of homeless and runaway children, 85% of children with behavioral disorders, 71% of high school dropouts, 75% of youth in drug abuse centers, and 85% of all youth in prison have in common, they all come from fatherless homes. There are over 25 million kids right now growing up in a home without their dad. And for them, Father's Day is just another fatherless day. But it doesn't have to be this way. The numbers show that children with involved fathers have higher self-esteem, better grade point averages, and they grow up to become the most compassionate adults. Dads, we are vital. The role we play is world changing. God has given us the ability to completely rewrite the future not only for our sons and daughters, but for the millions of girls and boys who are right now living without a dad. Now is the time to step up. Our kids need us more than ever. The fatherless need us more than ever. There are kids in this building right now who need a man of God in their lives, a role model, a mentor, someone to say, I'm proud of you, someone to have their back, someone to affirm them, someone to show the love of Christ to them. Not just anyone, not just a friend. They need a man. So to all the dads out there, 
reflecting Jesus to their kids, willing to stand up for the abandoned, and giving it all for their family. We say thank you. God is changing the world through you. Your impact will reach further than you can ever imagine. So be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Happy Father's Day. Let's have our Father stand right now. First off, we want to honor you. Amen. You are so importante. And I'd like us to pray for these men of God that have huge responsibility. You can see what happens to kids in fatherless homes. More, more what I would like to zero in on with you is don't be a fatherless father, even if you are in the home, because it's possible to be invisible and disengaged even in the home. And so we need to be the kind of God, the kind of father that God wants us to be. Let's pray for our fathers for just a moment. Father, we ask you to touch every father in this room and those that aren't here or away or traveling. We ask you to strengthen them, to give them the courage to be the leaders that they need to be, to be righteous men of God, to lead their families and to keep them moving in the kingdom of God, that they would know when to be strong and when to not be strong, and that they would have the wisdom when to speak and when not to speak, and that they would have the wisdom to speak in the way that you would have them to speak. Help them to have the courage they need to be the fathers that they need to be. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. And fathers, in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to come down and make a new dedication. You may be seated. God bless you all. What kind of father is God? I'd like you to take some notes, especially our fathers. And I'm going to name, n number out a few things that characterize God as our father. And I'd like you to jot them down while you're saying amen at the same time. All right? First off, if you're a father, do you love your children? If you have, do you love your family? And are they the most important thing to you? I want to get some response from our fathers here today. Number one, speaking of God, that God is a caring father. And I'm so glad about that because he is a caring father. That means he's compassionate and he's loving. And we can be so thankful that God is compassionate and he is loving and he is caring because we need his care in our lives. Can I get an amen from somebody? This is the kind of God we serve. This is why we don't have to be afraid of God. We need to run to God, not run from God. God is painted in many different ways in various people and religions. Many times God is portrayed as a God that's going to get you if you do something wrong. Well, God does want to get you, but he doesn't want to punish you. He wants to rescue you, and he wants to help you not make the same mistakes you've made before. And God cares about your circumstances. To some people, talking about dads today might not be very pleasant because in your family of origin, maybe your family didn't have a dad or the dad that you had might not have been a very good dad. In the life groups that we have on Sunday nights, last Sunday night I went to one of our groups, as I do 
regularly. Today, I'll be going to Tim Aaron's group and sharing with them and being with them in their, their, their life group. And in that life group I was in, when we started talking about honoring your father and your mother, and I know this happened in several of our life groups, there was a time when people started revealing what it was like in their home when they were kids. And because the atmosphere is safe, we even make a pledge every week that what's said in the group stays in the group. And I'm not telling you who the group was I was with, and I'm just going to make a few references to how sad and hurt, and the hurts and wounds that have been left on several of the people in the group. And there was such a spirit of healing and love that went to a few of the folks that shared some hard times in, in their childhood. And so, sadly, we live in a broken world. We live in a world that's dark. We live in a world that's not compassionate. We live in a world where it's dog eat dog, and the dogs seem to be getting bigger. And the world seems to be getting darker. We weren't supposed to be here in this jungle. We were supposed to be in the garden with our grandparents, Adam and Eve. But they sinned against God and were driven out into the wilderness and f fell in sin and became broken. And that brokenness was passed down to Cain who killed Abel. And the world has been tumbling ever since. I, it's sort of a negative thought, but it's still true to me that we live in a jungle environment. And in this jungle environment, there are wild beasts and there are heathen and there are those that want to hurt us. And I'm quite sure if we live long enough, we'll see some persecution that may get even physical as Christians. Because there is an antichrist spirit at work. The Apostle Paul said, that the spirit of the Antichrist doth already work. And that was 2,000 years ago. And if the spirit of the Antichrist is working 2,000 years ago, let us not be ignorant and not understand that the spirit of the Antichrist doth work even to this day. And it's increasing. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. That's one reason fathers need to be strong fathers and strong leaders and courageous human beings to nurture their family and to nurture their wives and to keep everybody strong and in the house of God. You need to, fathers, keep yourself and keep your children in the house of God. You are the leader. You are the protector. Hello, amen. And you need to be standing up from time to time and say, whoa, 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 that's the wrong direction. This is the right direction, and this is the direction we're going in. That's what leaders do. They lead. Leaders don't follow. They lead. And brethren, you and I need to be the leaders in our home that we need to be. And somebody shout amen. All in favor of strong father leaders shout yes. There's an intimidation spirit in our world to stand up for what's right because we want to be politically correct and we don't want to offend anybody. And we don't want to offend anybody, but we don't want to be so intimidated that we keep our mouths shut when we ought to open our mouths and lovingly share our opinion about whatever may be going on, and especially in the home. to be leaders, to lead your family with strength. 
And by that, I don't mean by being a bully, but I mean by strength of conviction of what's right and what's wrong and having the courage to speak it out and lead your family in the right way. And the first thing I want you to think about is God is a caring God and a caring Father, and you need to have that same compassion and lovingness with your family. Don't be aloof. I'm so glad that God is not aloof that you can never get his attention. And he's always too busy for me. But because he's a compassionate and a loving father, that when I call on him and I speak his name, I loved what was happening in the prayer room this morning. It was a shame that we just weren't able to just stay there for a while. And the father that's compassionate And the father that cares came into that room and began to minister to me. I wanted to linger there. I wanted to just stay there and let all the folks that didn't want to be in the prayer room just sit here for a while. Except we got to get out of here by 12 o'clock. Or 1 o'clock when we get all this stuff done. In Psalms 103, 13, it says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. This is assuming that our fathers are compassionate. I think one of the things that is so negative, and I kind of lived under this kind of cloud myself, that I could never quite be good enough. And I never seemed to be able to be totally pleasing to my father, who's now deceased. And it made me feel like I wasn't up to snuff. I wasn't good enough. And I couldn't be good enough. And that's the opposite of caring and compassionate. There needs to be not only the time of motivating to achieve, but there also needs to be a time of patting on the back and giving accolades and letting them know that they are blessed and they are good and they are loved and they matter and they're going to be successful. We've got to not only be disciplinarian, but we also need to be encouragers of our children and of our wives. Let's just give the Lord a good hand praise for that. It grieves me when I hear fathers talk down to their children, especially your sons. You should not speak down to your children. You should speak over to your children. Does that make sense? Because when you speak down to them, it becomes a put down. I'm glad when God's had to say some hard things to me because to whom he loves, he rebukes and chastens. And sometimes he has to kind of wake us up a little bit and shake our cage that he has never spoken down to me. He's spoken over to me in love and compelling compassion to draw me to him not push me away from him. When you speak down to your children, you're pushing them away from you. But when you, you can speak things that are hard to say or hard to hear, but you can do it in a loving way, which brings fruit and love instead of wounds and healing. And God is a compassionate God. That's the first one. He's a caring God. Because he's a caring God, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says this. How many has been anxious this week? That you've had anxiety this week? Now, don't lie and not raise your hand because we all have anxiety. I've been anxious this week. Anxiety can get all over you without you even really knowing it. And the Scripture says here, cast all your anxiety on him. Because he cares for you. It's that 
caring and compassionate father. When I'm worried, when I'm stressed, and it seems like every week on the building, by the way, if you drive by there today, you can see the steel up on, on top of the building and up that hill, and it's about a little bit more over half done on the steel. It's fantastic. It's amazing. And every week something seems to go backwards, and there's always a difficulty And between trying to take care of people and making sure the building project is going on right and solving the problems, I get anxious, and I get anxious without even realizing it. And then my father taps me on the shoulder and reminds me of this scripture, cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Your father cares about you and your situation, and he's inviting you to cast your cares upon him. What that means is to hand over the thing that you're troubled with and put it in the hands of Jesus so that you can walk in peace and harmony with God all week long. And he is a compassionate and uh, and, uh, caring father. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you have need of them. He's saying, Don't panic over the daily needs of life. God knows that you need them. If you have relationship with him, if you have been spirit-filled, if you've been water baptized in the name of Jesus and born again, that he cares about you and he knows your situation and he knows how to supply your needs. He's saying, don't worry about that. I will take care of it. I will help you. Now, somebody says Jesus always comes on time, but he will scare you to death. that when Jesus got there on time, it was his time, not my time. My time is right now. His time may be down the road, but how many can relate to that? Amen. But just because he hadn't come on your time doesn't mean he isn't going to come. Just because it hadn't happened when you wanted it, I want it like right now. But sometimes he just lets it lay there so that You can trust him. And so, he's a caring God. Number two, God is a consistent father. That means you can count on him. You don't want your kids and your wife worried what kind of mood you're going to be in when you come home. Sometimes he's here, sometimes he's here, sometimes over here, sometimes he's over here. God is a consistent father, and we need consistency. Your job is not over when you get home at night. Your other job starts, and that is loving your children, caring for your children, and loving and nurturing your wife. So many times I especially when our kids were young, I thought my job was over when I got home. No. No, I just finished my part-time job. Now's my full-time job. And we need to be consistent. When we get home, You need to pause just before you go in the door and sort of summon yourself. Life was tough. The day was hard. The commute was six hours each way, whatever it was. And I'm home. I can't wait to just be alone. (laughs) Lots of fathers do that. And what that does is shut the family out, and they're looking to you, brethren, to meet their needs, their emotional needs, their spiritual needs. Does anybody think I'm preaching okay here today? 
Aren't you glad that God doesn't ignore you when you need him? Let's give God some high praise for being the great God that he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you for being a consistent God. Notice here in James chapter 1 and verse 7, the Scripture tells us in the Amplified Version, in J James, am I right? Sheila? James 1.17 in the Amplified, or King James, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I want to point this out to you. There is no variableness. He never changes. Now, I'm not God. I change. But God doesn't change. And when it comes to our family... We've got to be consistent. Because if they don't know what kind of mood you're going to be in, are you going to bless them or yell at them? You're going to create anxiety in their hearts. And I'm so glad God is consistent with me. And he is constantly offering himself to help me. Amen. Psalms 59, Sheila, verse 10. It says this in, the, the, uh, in another version. It says, My God is changeless in his love for me, and he will come and help me. He will let me see my wish upon the true uh, come true upon my enemy. Now, that's not good news because you want God to beat up your neighbor. We're talking about the enemy of our soul. And he is changeless in his love for me. Is that the right screen? Okay. Changeless in his love. And he will come and help me. He's not going to come yesterday, but not come today. That's how your earthly father was. And one of the reasons that we have trouble in these areas is because that's what we experienced as children. And people have to work through the deficiencies that happened in their home to be able to fully experience God in the way that he really is. He really is a good God. And he does not change in his love for us, God's gifts remain with us, and he will continue to be there to help you through whatever is going on in your life. This world is very challenging. There's tremendous amount of pain in this world. At times that when... Maybe I've got to go to a couple hospital calls. I'm hearing somebody whose heart is broken, and I get so exposed to so much pain, it starts to depress me because there is a tremendous amount of pain in our world, emotional pain. And this pain is pervasive. And there may be, and I'm sure there are people in this room that are in pain here today, and I want to offer you a God that can soothe the hurts of your heart and of your mind, and whatever you're dealing with, God cares about your situation. He cares about your d dilemma. He cares about your difficulty. He wants to soothe somebody right now. Why don't we just lift our hands and praise Him for it and let His Spirit just come down right now and soothe somebody's heart in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. And the third thing I want to tell you about 
is that God is a father who is close. He is available. I've sort of touched on this. He's close. Oftentimes when we're stressed, when we're in pain, when life in its heaviness has got us bowed over, it seems like God is so far away. Can you relate to that? When discouragement comes and difficulties come, it seems like God is so far away. It doesn't mean he is far away. But when our emotions are like that, it's very difficult to experience the presence of God when your spirit is low and heavy. He doesn't leave. He's still there. And when you feel bent over or heavy laden, know that he is close and he is available. That's why we have to have prayer lives. Because if you don't get relief in the presence of God in your prayer life, these things can debilitate us in dangerous levels, can cause our hope and our desires to sort of dim down and can make life very, very dark. That's why it was good to be in the prayer room this morning. And I want to invite all of you next week to get in that room right across that hall when you get here and spend some time with other believers. Because when you call upon him, he shows up. And when you're heavy laden and you're burdened and you're stressed and you're confused, when you take a minute and pause and call on his name, you'll find he's a lot closer than you thought he was. In Acts chapter 17, verse 27, it said, God did this so that men would reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. He's not far. No matter how far it looks, it's a lie. He's right here because he said he would never leave nor forsake. Can I get an amen to that? And so he's close. And brethren, you want to be available to your family. You don't want to lock them out. You want to invite them in and love them and care for them. Well, it wasn't like that in my family. Good. Not good. But instead... Just because it happened to you doesn't mean you have to do it to your own. Turn the thing around. Break the cycle right now and be the dad that your family needs. Amen. Let's all give the Lord a clap offering right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to talk to the dads for one second. I want to get a response from you. How many of you dads want to be a better dad? Say, yes, I do. Your kids are begging you to be a better dad. I'm not saying you're being a bad dad, but there's always room for improvement. Can I get an amen to that? Now I want to tell you about three truths about God and we'll be done. Number one truth about God, he's never too busy for us. I can remember one time, I've told this story before, and if I, you've heard it, Enjoy it again. You've watched reruns before. And enjoyed them. I must have been about eight. It was a Saturday, lovely day. I wanted to throw the ball with my dad, which we'd done a couple of times. And it wasn't so much the ball, it was him that I wanted. So I came downstairs, I had my glove, I had his glove, I had a ball, I said, and he was sitting in the living room, and all I could see was his knees and his fingers wrapped around the newspaper as I was talking to him. Dad, Dad, let's let's go out and throw the ball. I'm I'm tired, son. I, I don't want to today. Oh, Dad, come on, Dad. 
Come on, it's a great day. We won't do it long. Let's just throw the ball. And I'm seeing the fingers around the newspaper and his knees and his legs. No, I said I was tired. I don't want to today. And then the third time, Dad, come on, Dad. I got the ball. I got our gloves. Come on, we can just go out and throw the ball. And he got angry. And that's when I saw his face. He pulled the newspaper down. And he got loud about how tired he was, and he told me he didn't want to play. I'll never forget that feeling that came over me when he said that. And that's sort of uh, an example and representative of some of the things that all of us have dealt with. And I can remember the feeling of, and I didn't recognize what it really meant at the time, but a feeling of I wasn't important enough. I wasn't valuable enough. I wasn't available. And this first truth, he's never too busy for us, is a feeling that we don't need to have as children, as wives, and brethren. I know life is heavy, but don't be too busy for your family. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. When you come sincerely, he's never too busy. I don't know how he does it. The only answer is that he's God. Just the other day in prayer, I was specifically asking for a certain thing and some help, some strength, and he showed up and bless me and help me and encourage me. And I, I thought, how can you do that with people praying all the time all around the earth? How do you be that personal with me and that personal with everybody? Of course, he didn't explain it because I would never understand the answer. But it was so reassuring that he was not too busy for me. And he's not too busy for you. I've heard people say, well, God's got a lot to do. And I don't want to bother him with this. You're bothering him by not bringing it to him. <laughs> he's not too busy. Number two, truth, he loves to meet our needs. He loves to do that. If you're a, a father, let's say on a kid's birthday or Christmas time or whatever, there's a joy in giving to our children. And to our wives, brother. And, but not just then, but he loves to meet our needs. If ye then, being evil, in Luke chapter 11, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? All he needs is an invitation. He doesn't push his way in. He knocks on the door, and if we hear his voice and open the door, he'll come in and sup with us. And he loves to take care of us and to meet our needs because he's that kind of a dad. Never be um, negative and disappointed that your kids cost you so much. They'll feel that. They'll know that. And how does that make them feel? And so dads, to be like Jesus is to be thrilled to supply the needs of your family. The third truth we're talking about today is he is sympathetic to our hurts. I told this a long time ago. It's an embarrassing story. 
And sorry to keep referencing myself, but I don't know your story. I only all know my story. That when I was about six or seven years old, we lived in upstate New York. And behind this apartment complex where we lived, there was a barbecue for the people to use. And it was one of those barbecues that had a chimney in it, a big barbecue. And the smoke would go up the chimney. And I thought it would be really funny this particular day to play Santa Claus, to go to the barbecue with our friends, and my sisters were there, and I climbed up on the barbecue, and I was going to come down the, the chimney like Santa Claus and come out the front. Seemed reasonable. Santa Claus does it every year. So I got in my legs down in the chimney, and it got a little tight, so I just kind of pushed my way down and finally got to the place where I could not go any further. And I could not get out either. I was stuck in the chimney. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. I was afraid somebody would come light a fire in the barbecue. And I'm stuck. I can't go down, and I can't go out. Now, the thing was, I wanted to be funny, and all the kids were laughing, except they didn't know I couldn't get out of there. And then I started to panic. And I screamed to my sister, Gail, go get Dad. I can't get out. Well, she panicked and ran around the corner. And I'm starting to cry. I know Dad's going to be mad. I don't even know if he can get me out of the chimney. <laughs> I didn't plan on telling you this. this is an embarrassing story. And I knew he was going to be mad. He was kind of that way, you know. And suddenly, he comes running around the corner. And he stops. And he sees me. And he realizes I'm really okay. And he starts to laugh. <laughs> and he just really just stands there laughing. That was good news. <laughs> because I learned something about him. Number one, when he found out I was in trouble, he came running to help me. And number two, when he saw me, he smiled, which meant he wasn't mad. I want to tell you all something. We get ourselves into some terrible fixes. Lots of our trials that the devil's doing is really dumb things we did on our own. It comes from making dumb decisions and doing dumb things, and we heap on junk on ourselves that we really didn't have to go through like getting in a chimney. Nobody picked me up and stuffed me in there. I got stuffed in there on my own. But it was so good to see my dad running around the corner and then smiling. I knew everything was going to be all right. And so it is in our lives when we do dumb things and we get in jams and we make bad decisions and we spend money we don't have, we even sin in ways that we shouldn't have. And we need God's help because we're stuck. We can't get out. You know, that's the, that's the deception of sin. Sin has a way of holding on to you once you get in it. And coming out of sin isn't as easy as going back to sin. I'm not pointing to you on purpose. You just happen to be where I'm standing. How many ever experienced that? You did some dumb things and you got in trouble and you got stuck. And you called on God. Hello? And you called on God. And I want to encourage you, when you're stuck and you're in trouble, even if it's your, your fault, call on God because he's good at getting people out of trouble that they get themselves into. Oh, let's give him some praise for that. And he is sympathetic. He is sympathetic to our hurts, and to our problems. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close 
to the broken heart and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And when you call on God, guess what he's going to do? He's going to be coming around the corner. And when he gets there, he's going to smile because he's not going to be mad because you called on him and you need him. He loves to meet your needs. Amen. Amen. And even if it's your fault, he's going to smile and he's going to come. And my dad got up there and pulled me out of that chimney, chuckling the whole time. And I learned a great lesson that day. Don't go down a chimney. (laughs) And I learned an even better lesson, that when my dad, and when I need my dad, and he knows I need him, he's going to come running, and he's not going to be mad at me. And the third thing I learned is when I mess up, And God, I call on God, he's going to come running to help me, and he won't be mad. He'll pull me out of the chimney and teach me the lesson, don't go back here again. And he's running to somebody here today. If you'll open up your heart and let him come in and do what he wants to do, he can give you the strength to get out of the mess that you're in. So he's never too busy for us. He loves to meet our needs, and he is sympathetic to our hurts. He cares. He cares. Number four, God is a competent father. That means he's capable. For for with God, nothing shall be impossible. He's competent. Ladies and gentlemen, If you want to be a better mother, a better dad, get some good books, read them, learn how to be a better parent if you need to be. And be a competent parent. In Ephesians 3.20 now, glory be to God who by his mighty power at work with us is able to do far more than we would ever ever dare to ask or even dream of, of, dream of, Infinity beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, and hopes. God is competent. He's able to do, the King James says, exceedingly above and beyond all that we ask or think. He's got it together. He's able. He's not weak, and he does not fail. John 14 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from this, from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Brothers and sisters, we know Jesus. And Jesus is saying, when you know me, you know the Father. It's the same person. He's competent, he's willing, and he cares. He's a great father. Jesus, happy Father's Day. You're the best father we could ever have. No matter what kind of father you had, he's a better father. No matter what you might have suffered, he won't treat you the same way. Dads, would you stand up right now? I want something to change in somebody's heart today. I hope I've said something that was helpful to somebody. Your father cares. Oh, God. We get ourselves in such fixes. But you're always right there, pulling us up, getting us out of the chimney. You're always kind. I thank you for the chastisements. I thank you for those times that you rebuked me. Because you love, to whom you love, 
your rebuke and chasten, but you don't do it out of anger. You do it out of love to help us be the people that we need to be, the person that we need to be. Now, if you are not a father, you're a male but not a father, you may become a father. And I'd like you to stand too. In other words, would all men stand? And I am a father. I have a son that's 41 and a daughter that's 39. And as parents of grown children, you all know that you will always be the parent. You'll never stop being concerned. You'll never stop wanting to help. If you're a good parent, you're going to carry that all the way to the end. And you just got to change tactics and be less direct and a little more subtle and try to add a little guidance. Some of you are fathers of very little children. Those children are so, so innocent and need so much care. And it's so sad when we hear about the things that are perpetrated upon children in our world. The cruelty that's done to children is a crime. Children need nurturing. They didn't, they didn't invite themselves into your home. You brought them here. And they need nurture and love. And that's the kind of God we serve. He nurtures us and he loves us and he, he protects us and he shields us. And yes, sometimes we feel some pain and sometimes life isn't that great, but he's always there to help us. And fathers, I'd like you to take the trip, as I told you in the front. In the beginning, would you come on down to the front real quickly, please? All the fathers, grandfathers. If you're an uncle, jump in board because you, you have a role to play. And sometimes, brethren, if we were abused in some way, somehow there's something in an abused child when he grows up, ends up being abusive. But that can break. You can break that chain by the love of God. If you guys in the aisles could just slide over just a little bit so people can get to the center. There's more room in the center there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is a holy moment right now. Your wives are hoping something changes in you today. I'm not saying you're a bad father or a bad mother or a bad uh, husband, but your wives are in, in your corner. They want the best for you, and they, they want you to be a strong leader, not a mean leader. A s strong does not mean mean. You can be strong but loving. How many of you dads that are here could see some areas you could use some improvement? If you're a dad, you saw some areas. Okay, good. Thank you for being honest. Me too. What I'd like you to do is focus. Hey, brother. How you doing? Good to see you. Bless you, man. You're, excuse me. What was my thought? I saw my friend over here, huh? Yes, thank you. I'm getting old. Sean, hurry back. When you see that thing 
It's like last week when Pastor Sean was talking about filling the wells or digging out the wells, and our wells have been stopped up. God showed us all some things. And ladies, would you stand behind these brethren here? Just, just stand where you are. And all of us, when he, could, when he talked about the wells being filled with dirt, with earth, and our flesh is blocking up the wells, God showed all of us each set specific things that were blocking the flow. And I went to a, one of our, uh, I went to our uh, congregation in Bethesda Thursday night and so enjoyed being there and reminded them, don't forget what God showed you that last Sunday that needs improvement and work on it and ask God to help you get it out of your system. And so I'm saying the same thing to you, brethren, today that whatever God showed you that you could improve and need to improve, don't forget that. The Bible talks about being hearers only rather than doers of the Word because they would see themselves and then forget about it. Don't forget about what God is showing you because your children need you to improve in that area. And so we're going to pray today, but let's not make this the last time we pray about being the father we, we need to be. Does that make sense to you guys? And I honor you today and appreciate your sincerity in coming forward because God wants to help us. He wants to help us. And I believe if we can get in prayer together and really cry out together, brethren. We can break some strongholds in the next five minutes. Things that bug you, things that hassle you, things that need to go, I believe we can break some of that in the next five minutes. How many of you ladies believe we can break some of that? Would you help us? Would you ladies point your hands down toward the these good men right now? And let's lift up our voices and really cry out all together, all at once, and cry out for God to help us. Brethren, you standing here, I need you to lift your hands right now and let's cry out. Let's cry out. Make some noise. Make some sincerity. Make a desperate effort. God, in the name of Jesus, we need you right now. We need you right now, God, to help us improve to help us be the men that we need to be, to be the fathers that we need to be. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we need you to break some things. We need you to break some things. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, brother, and cry out. Cry, you gotta want to get rid of it. You gotta want to get rid of it. You gotta want to get rid of it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, sisters. Pray with us. Pray with us. Oh God, we want to be changed. We want to be changed. We need to be changed. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, how he loved us, how he In the name of Jesus, help me be a better dad. Help me be a better husband. Help me, I can't do it by myself. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. He loves us. 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 He 
you pray for one another now. Pray, and I want you to cry out one more time, and then we'll go. But let's be desperate. Let's be earnest about the effectual, earnest prayer of a righteous man that faileth much. Put your hand on somebody's shoulders. Let them pray for you. You pray for them. Amen. Let's do it now. Come on, sisters. We need your help. Give it, give it a prayer push for just a minute. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, brother. Let's do it for a few minutes. God, we need you. 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 Help. Help my brothers. Help my brothers. Help my brothers. Oh, help me, help me. I need you. I need more of you. Oh, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better, but I need your strength. That's right, brother. Pray for each other. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder and pray for them. That's right. Pray for them. Pray for one another. We need help. We live in a sick world. Yes, yes. Oh, we're setting a new course. We're setting a new course. 